Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at preferred stock, which is covered in introductory accounting course, intermediate accounting, as well as the CPA exam. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lecture. This is a list of all my courses. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist, subscribe. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Share the wealth, connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you'll find additional resources such as multiple choice, true, false, thousands of CPA questions, and additional resources. If you are looking to study for your CPA exam and pass the exam, I strongly suggest you check out my website. Why do companies issue preferred stock? Now, we already talked about common stock so we have common stock and now we're going to be looking at preferred so if you don't know what common stock is please look in this playlist okay i'm going to put the description and you know make sure you understand what comments so why do we issue preferred stock well one reason is to raise money is to get money without sacrificing control simply put get the money and we don't share the money with anywhere else in terms of control two to boost the return earned by common stockholder through financial leverage you will see that preferred stock is not really a true stock it works a little bit like that and that is leverage and leverage means you are using other people's money to make money of them this is what leverage is so preferred stock you will see it it works like a liability although it's considered an equity but you're gonna see it works like a liability and it's in one way or another and also to appeal to investors who may believe the common stock is too risky what does it mean well in, in terms of liquidation in case something happened to the company and the company is gonna go out of control here's what here's what's gonna happen there's a lane there's a lane that people will stand in to get their money common stockholders common stockholders are the last people in the lane the last people so they get their money last and right before this group we have the preferred stockholders so if the preferred stockholders thinks the company is risky they will have a priority position in case of liquidation so if they think the company is too risky they prefer to buy their preferred stock and the expected return on the common stock is too low and if you bought common stock they're not going to pay dividend while preferred usually or generally speaking will pay dividend therefore the return is higher so those are some of the reasons so just simply put it's a separate class of stock that's all what it is and typically have a priority notice it's called the preferred it means we have it has a certain preferences what are those certain preferences it has pr preference in terms of dividend that's the most important preference and in case of a liquidation a distribution in case of liquidation they come before the common shareholders simply put those are the main reasons you get your dividend first which will give you a higher return and in case of liquidation you have less risk that's those are the two reasons usually okay it has no voting power so generally speaking they have no voting power so that's why it's not really a, a true ownership interest in the company because you cannot vote and what's unique about preferred usually it has a stated dividend rate now what does it mean stated dividend rate it means they tell you exactly how much money you are going to be getting the good news about the preferred dividend is from an accounting perspective we when we journalize the entry it's the same as common stock so let's take a look at a journal entry and explain this stated dividend rate t company issued 5000 shares one dollar par value seven percent cumulative preferred for 102 dollars so the first thing is let's journalize the entry so the company sold issued 5000 shares for 102 dollars so they would receive five thousand dollar times 102 which is five thousand shares and the selling price is 102 they would receive five hundred and ten thousand dollars that's the cash that the company would receive then we have to credit preferred stock because we issued preferred stock how much do we credit preferred stock it's the same thing as common stock what does that mean it means we take the number of shares times the par value how many number of shares are we issuing in this example easy five thousand shares 
What is the par value? Hundred dollar. So we're gonna credit. We're gonna credit preferred stock for half a million, and what's left is ten thousand dollar. Just like common stock, we have an account called pay in capital in excess of par value preferred stock. So just like the only thing, the only thing difference is in common stock, we call it common stock. Here we call it preferred stock. So it's paid in capital and access paid in capital in access of par value preferred stock. So that's the journal entry. So that's easy. Now, what you need to be aware of is the 7% cumulative. Notice here it says 7% cumulative. Now, don't worry about the cumulative. We're going to explain the cumulative in a moment. But what we need to worry about here is, remember I said it's usually stated as a dividend rate. You remember the statement? Here's an example of it. So what we do is, see the par value is $100. This is the par value. We take the par value and we multiply it by a percentage that's stated. So simply put, each shareholder would receive $7 per share so simply put what is the dividend rate so this is what you need to understand what is the dividend rate it's a percentage times the par value the percent here is seven percent the par value is 100 the dividend is i'm not sorry the dividend rate the dividend is seven percent of 100 which is seven dollar per share so you need to understand how to compute the dividend per share it's the percent times the par value. It's a percent of the par value. Very important. We will revisit this in a moment. Now let's talk about cumulative versus non-cumulative preferred stock. What does cumulative mean? Cumulative means if we fail to pay the company, if let's assume we have year one, year two, year three, year four. In year one, we made no profit. We paid no dividend. In year two, we made no profit we paid no dividend. In year three, we made a lot of profit. If we have preferred stock and the preferred stock is considered cumulative, what we have to do, we have to go back. First, pay year one, pay year two, then pay year three for the preferred. It means their dividend don't go away. It's cumulative. Simply put, we're going to have what's called dividend and arrear. So what are the dividend and arrear? The dividend and arrear are year two and year one. It means we owe the dividend from prior year. So dividend and arrear must be paid before dividend may be paid on common stock. So first we have to pay the dividend and arrear, then the current, so year three is the current year, then we pay the common stock. Now, if this if this preferred was non-cumulative, non-cumulative here, guess what? Since we did not pay year one, that's it. We no longer have to worry, worry about year one. If we did not pay year two, we don't have to worry about year two. All what we have to do now in year three, when we made profit and we're going to distribute dividend, we only have to worry about the current year dividend. So undeclared dividend from current and prior year do not have to be paid in future years. So if we did not declare the dividend from the current or prior years, we're not responsible for the dividend. Okay, so the best way to illustrate this is to just work an example to see how this all works. So this is how the preferred stock is listed on the balance sheet. So remember, we have common stock, par value, how many shares authorized, how many shares issued and outstanding, total of 300,000. Now for the preferred stock, it follows the same concept. It follows the same concept. What does it mean to follow the same concept? The preferred stock, we have the par value listed, 1,000 shares authorized, of which only 50 are issued and outstanding. And we're going to assume this is a 9% preferred. It means we pay 9%. It means we pay nine dollars per share because one hundred dollars times nine percent will give us nine dollars okay and this is how the preferred stock is listed on the on the balance sheet okay so let's take a look at an example consider the following stockholder equity section is what we what we saw above the board of directors declares five thousand dividend in 2018 in 2019 the board declared and paid cash of 42. well let's go back here and let's assume first it's a cumulative. So, so in 2018, we declared $5,000 of dividend. And let's assume this preferred, first let's assume this preferred is cumulative. What does that mean? It means in 2018, in 2018, well, guess what? In 2018, we had to pay the preferred shareholders $9,000. Why $9,000? Here's why $9,000. Remember, we said this is a 9% preferred. 
we have to pay nine dollars per share and we have one thousand dollar one thousand shares one thousand shares authorized it means we have to prepare we have to pay the preferred shareholders nine thousand dollar we only pay them we only paid five thousand it means everything goes to the preferred and now we are four thousand dollars short for the preferred it means we're going to pay them five thousand this year so this is for the preferred shareholders and zero obviously to the common shareholders in 2018. in 2019 we paid 42,000. well if in 2019 we paid 42 42,000 4,000 for dividend in arrear 9,000 for the current year and what's left is 29 for common stockholders in 2019 13,000 goes to the preferred and 29 goes to the common. now if this stock was non-cumulative it means we don't have to worry about this 4,000 so in 2018 all the money goes to the preferred in 2019 we pay 9,000 to the preferred and everything else goes to the common because it's non-cumulative non-cumulative means if we did not pay you we don't have to pay you okay and this is the computation again if it's non-cumulative versus cumulative participating versus non-participating again the preferred comes in different flavor another flavor is participating versus non-participating participating means dividend may exceeds stated amount once common stockholder receive a dividend equal to the preferred state remember in the example that we said we said it's a 100 dollar par value nine percent one hundred dollar par value it means you're gonna get nine dollar per share what happened is this is if this dividend if i'm sorry if this preferred is participating because again the preferred stock they come in different flavors it means once the common shareholders get nine dollars per share as well then you have to go back and share with the preferred now most most preferred are non participating non participating means you get your nine dollars and that's it but in, in advanced courses you have to learn about participating you just for this course you just need to know what's the meaning of participate now in, in intermediate accounting I do work examples with non participating versus participating but here you just have to know the meanings of it so non participating easy dividend are limited to a maximum amount each year simply put you're gonna get one hundred dollars times nine percent you will get nine dollar per share if we have one thousand shares let's assume we have one thousand shares the maximum we pay per year is nine thousand this is the max that's it here under participating we may get more than nine thousand we may get more than nine thousand so the normal thing is non-participant now the best way to illustrate this is to work an example about dividend preference with uh, dividend preferences specifically cumulative or non cumulative a company outstanding stocks consist of 80 shares of non-cumulative five percent with a par value of five dollars and also have 200 shares with a par value of a dollar first it's a five percent times five dollars so we have five dollars times five percent so each shareholder each preferred shareholder is guaranteed a quarter every time the company pays dividend it's non-cumulative only if they declare and paid during the first three years the corporation declared and paid the following cash dividend determine the amount of dividend paid to each of the two classes of stockholders in 2015 we paid 15 dollars well the first thing we have to do we have 80 shares 80 shares of preferred so we're going to take 80 shares times a quarter so we're going to pay them 20 dollars actually for 2015 we paid only yeah for 20 for year 2015 we only paid 15 dollars the whole thing goes to the preferred shareholders and since it's non-cumulative we only have to pay them 15 and and we don't owe them anything now if it's cumulative we have to pay them 15 and we say we owe them five but we don't have to worry about this now in 2016 we paid five dollars again five dollars we have to pay them 20 everything goes to the preferred the five dollars goes to the preferred and we don't owe them anything we don't owe them anything if it was cumulative we owe them another 15. in 2017 we paid 200 dollars of this 200 dollars 20 goes to the preferred shareholders and the remaining after i after we pay after we pay after we pay 20 what's left is 180 180 goes to the common okay so it looks something like this uh so we have to pay 20 dollar 
annual dividend. So in 2015, 15 goes, we have $15. It all goes to the preferred, nothing to the common. In 2016, we paid $5. All goes to the preferred, nothing to the common. In 2017, $200. We have to pay the preferred 20 and the remaining goes to the common. So the key in this computation is to remember we have to pay per year $20. If we have $20, they get paid first. If not, we don't have to worry about it worry about it because it's non-cumulative. Assuming the same example, now we could switch the example and make it cumulative if you want to, okay? If it's cumulative, here's what's going to happen. If this is cumulative, we're going to pay the first $15, it's going to go to the preferred, and we're going to owe them $5, and nothing will go to the common for year one. Year two, we paid five, the whole thing goes to the preferred, the whole thing goes to the preferred, and now we owe them 20. Why 20? 5 from year 2015, 15 from year 2016, we owe them $20 now. In 2017, we made a bunch of profit, $200. Well, $40 goes to the preferred, 20 for the current year and 24 prior years, okay, which is equal to 40. And what's left? Now we clear the rear, we, have, we don't owe them anything, and the remaining goes to the common. If you like this recording, please like it, share it, put it in playlist. If it benefits you, it means it might benefit other people. Subscribe to the channel, and if you're interested in getting additional resources to pass your CPA exam and do well in your college education, to supplement your college education, visit my website. Study hard and stay safe, especially during those coronavirus days. Good